This brief tutorial is brought to you from the Public Health Centers for Excellence and will focus on using run charts to detect patterns in observed data. This module will provide a brief review of run charts, what they are and why you'd use them. We will review some examples of patterns that a run chart may help you detect in your processes. We will then review a series of quick quizzes to apply this information, show a real-world public health example, and of course provide further resources for more information and learning. So what are run charts? The run chart is a tool for studying observed data. It enables you to visually identify patterns in the data which reflect what's happening in the process. Run charts can be used real-time for displaying the data as you collect it. Line chart, trend chart, run chart, these are all the same type of chart, just with different names. Let's review the pieces and parts. The data values plotted on the left-hand side on the y-axis represent your process data. Perhaps it's minutes of wait time or incidences of errors. On the x-axis at the bottom of the graph, you will see your sample displayed over time or by cohorts, runs, or units. The dots represent the actual data points, which could be counts of individual incidences, again, or observations. And finally, the straight solid line represents the data mean or average, or sometimes the median is used. A note of caution here. Please do not create a run chart without at least eight data points. You need at least that many to be able to detect any meaningful patterns in the data. We'll talk about patterns more in the coming slides. So when would you use a run chart? Run charts are useful tools to help you monitor a process over time. For instance, perhaps you want to monitor client wait times in your WIC office. Run charts can also be helpful in evaluating a change to a process using it to display your process data both before and after an intervention. Run charts can also be used to help predict trends. For instance, you may find a pattern in the data that cues you to plan on staffing surge capacity during certain weeks prior to the start of school for back-to-school immunizations. In sum, there are many reasons why you'd use a run chart. Run charts help a QI team or work team monitor a process over time. It indicates patterns of variation over time. Run charts can help avoid overinterpreting a particular result or sample. It allows tracking both before and after a process improvement is made to measure impact. They require little or no calculating and can be created in real time by the team. Run charts can be very helpful in identifying the types of variation in your process, both common cause and special cause variation. Variation in process is covered in more depth in another module and this is a very important principle to understand in quality improvement. Let's review now the variation in your process data that a run chart can help you detect. There are four types we will be reviewing in the next few slides. These include trends, which are detected when you observe seven points or more in a row all going in the same direction. A run chart can also help you detect patterns that indicate data collection problems or possible manipulation of the data. This is detected by an observation of five or more identical data points in a row. A third type of pattern you might detect are shifts, identified by seven or more continuous data points either above or below the mean or center line. And finally, you might observe an alternating pattern in your data, where the data points consistently go up, then down, up, then down. This is a clue that you might have different people carrying out the same task or process, but using different procedures. Let's take the time now to review this information by looking at a series of graphs. This first example shows a trend. At what trial number does the trend start? Is it A, trial number 3, B, trial number 10, or C, trial number 13? The answer here is C. The trend starts at trial number 13, where you see seven or more data points going in the same direction. Here's another example. This example shows a shift. At what trial number does the shift start? A shift is indicated by seven or more continuous data points above or below the mean. So the answer here is B. The shift starts at trial number 11. 
where you can see that there are 10 data points in a row all above the mean or average value. What is this graph most likely indicating? We see something strange happening here. What's the data showing us? Does this run chart suggest a trend, shift, problems with data collection, or multiple processes? The answer is C. There are two areas of potential concern on this run chart, observed by a series of identical data values. This looks a little fishy and suggests there might be problems with data collection. You wouldn't normally see this with random variation in process. And finally, what does this run chart show? Here you see data in a consistent alternating pattern, up, down, up, down, up, down. You guessed it, the answer is D. This chart indicates that there are potentially more than one processes in place reflecting perhaps different staff using different procedures for the same service or process. This type of pattern would cue you to investigate what's going on. There are some important considerations when using a run chart. First, know that the average by itself is not always the best summary of data. There are a variety of numerical summaries to consider using. Those measures of the data center include the average or mean, which is calculated by adding up the total data values and dividing it by the total number of observations. You might also consider using a median, which is the middle value in the data set, where half of the data values lie above and half lie below. And finally, there's the mode. This is the most frequently occurring value in the set of data. Another consideration or note of caution is to be careful not to overinterpret the variation that you see. Key to this is having a working knowledge of variation theory and understanding what is common or expected variation and that which is special cause variation. These concepts are covered in another tutorial and I encourage you to explore that further. And finally, you also need to understand the concepts of process stability and capability. Process stability refers to a process that is stable in control and producing predictable results. Process capability refers to the ability of a process to meet known customer needs. Again, these are also concepts that are covered in a different tutorial. A couple more examples before we close. Here is a run chart that indicates where a QI project could be helpful. Let's pretend that this graph represents the number of days it's taking a staff to completely process an environmental health permit. Say it's on-site sewer applications. The green line represents the customer specification, meaning that completing the application within four days will meet your customer's needs, thereby ensuring positive customer satisfaction. You can see in this example that the mean or average is at about five days. Though there are instances where permits were completed within four days or even well under four days, the average is higher, meaning that the process is capable of meeting customers' needs but is not consistently doing it. You can also clearly see that there is a lot of variation in the process. The data points aren't tightly centered around the mean. This example would be a good candidate for a quality improvement project. The aim of the project would be to tighten up the variation around the average and mean, and you'd work to standardize the process, make it more consistent, and try and reduce the average number of days to complete a permit from five to under four. Finally, we have a real example from Washington, used by permission from Dr. Bill Riley, who worked with the Port Gamble Sklallam tribe. In this example, the clinic staff were working to increase visits to the clinic, and this run chart tracks their progress. Number of visits is reflected in the y-axis on the left. The data is being monitored monthly over time. The median is 637 visits per month. The tribe implemented an intervention to increase clinic visits starting in June. You can see that if after each staff training, there is a bump in the data, and overall, after the start of the intervention in June, the average visits start surpassing the median of 637. Here is a different look at what happened before and after the intervention that occurred in June 2009. This is the same information though they identified separately both the median before and the median after the intervention on two different graphs here. As you can see, this shows that the median clinic visits increased after the interventions. In other words, their QI efforts were effective. In summary, run charts are a tool to help us look at our process data. 
They show us variation in our public health processes and can provide us with valuable information needed to know when and how to act. This was a very brief tutorial on run charts. I would encourage you to take a look at other related topics in this series, including use of control charts, understanding variation in process, and process stability and capability. There are some other excellent resources that you can take a look at. We look forward to hearing from you if you would like further technical assistance on this or other performance management topics. This presentation is part of a performance management and public health training series presented by Washington's Public Health Centers for Excellence and funded by a grant from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The centers are located in the Spokane Regional Health District and the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department. Our goals are to help local health jurisdictions and tribal agencies improve their results, prepare to meet public health standards, and achieve accreditation. In addition to this training series, we offer technical assistance and resources in performance management to improve public health outcomes.